Hi, folks. Welcome back to Green Planet, Blue Planet podcast, featuring distinctly qualified global change makers that are dedicated to creating a healthier planet, one where diversity is lived, expressed, and celebrated. My name is Julian Guderlei. I'm committed to a world that allows people from all walks of life to thrive. And in today's episode, my guest is Yannick Silver. Yannick has been called a cosmic catalyst, a maverick mischief maker, and a galactic goofball. He redefines how business is played in the 21st century and the intersection of evolutionary growth, impact, and fun. Yannick is the creator of Cosmic Journal, author of Evolved Enterprise, and the founder of Maverick 1000, a global collective of visionary entrepreneurs making a serious difference in the world without taking themselves too seriously. And Yannick and I recently met at One Degree Network, another initiative of his. I'm really stoked to have this conversation with you. Yeah, thanks, Joy. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Green planet, blue planet. You and I need to talk about the word planet because that was a cool little thing that we talked about when, when you and I first met as well. Big time. Let's let's start right there. I think when when um when when we talked, we laughed about this because you had this vision of uh, a plant a planted seed, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, right. So that's out of the Cosmic Journal. Um, so actually, I can I'll, I'll show you the page if I find it. Real Pull fast. it up. Yeah. But it says, uh, and there's an f- interesting story about it. So it says bloom. It says bloom where you're planted. You can see the planted it nice i love it and and it actually came from um so for 108 days every single night i drew one of these illustrated pages in my own journal and then it turned into a published work and i never you know i never really intended it to get published but it's been incredible and this one i was out drawing till like three o'clock in the morning doing that that drawing here and uh and then i was supposed to say bloom where you're planted and and then like literally i fell asleep and my pen moved and it said P-L-N, P-L-A-N-E. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Man. The hell am I? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, every mistake is actually there for a reason. Like, okay, what am I doing with this thing? And then I, I wrote Bloom Where You're Planted It. And it just changed the context of it so much more. Um, so just incredibly powerful. Just like, you know, why are you planted it here? Why did you, almost like, why did you come down here? Like, what's, what's the real purpose? Why are you so, here? Why are we all here, right? Yeah, on, on, this, on this planet. And, uh, and you and I talked about global versus planet, which I thought was a really interesting distinction. Yeah, th- this is something that, you know, occurred to me. Um, well, first, when I named the podcast this way, and then the word planet just keep, kept coming up for me. But global, really, it got reframed by Ron Guerin, who was on the show a few months ago. Global is just really all of the things humans created. It's the global telecommunications grid, the global governance, the global health systems, whatever it is. And and so, you know, some of this might be good, but some of it might be bad too, in the sense that it's just a human brain idea. But planet is more like planetary. We're circling around the sun that is circling around a black hole that, you know, is in the middle of space. And so um, it gets us in touch with this more natural rhythm, which I think is, that's really it. That yeah, natural yeah I mean that, that that's absolutely it. It's uh, you know we've lost a lot of that, which has really been interesting for me. Like I, as a kid, I was really into like sacred sites and the pyramids and all sorts of you know now would be called parapsychology. Uh, but uh, like and then I lost all of that, or not lost it, but just went away from it. Went into marketing and business, and now I've come back to it, and I really see that this bridge that is needed more than ever about indigenous wisdom about. Um, ancient wisdom and bring it into modern times. And part of that is these natural cycles and natural ways of relating to the earth, relating to our planet, relating to our place in the cosmos and and the way that we can understand that. Like actually my last blog post was about new rules, new language and new story. And and us collectively, if we can lean into a new story and we can see what, what is, you know, what is really, really going on here and where we are. Yeah, this is so real. I think there's something I want to dig in a bit deeper. And that is, as a kid, I had this urge or inner feeling, something along the lines of what you just said. And I, I believe that every single kid has these notions, these awarenesses that there's something bigger why we're planeted here, right? To use, mm-hmm. use your word. There's something there's something here that we have to do. And it, it has to do with a world that we then seem to forget once we adopt the current adult paradigm, the current (laughs) um, nation state separation, the current modus operandus, right? Um, How did you reconnect with this in such a unique way that you're like, nope, I'm coming back to this. This is really what it's about. 
Well, so I think that we, it's almost like a, if you think of it as a, as a spiral and an upward spiral all the time, you're like, you're always coming back to the things that you loved as a kid. So for me, it was, it was art. I wanted to be a professional hockey player and a cartoonist in the off season. And, uh, and so <laughs> yeah, I've kind of come it. back into my art. The, the hockey never made it to the professional level at all, but, uh, and, and then, you know, I was always a class clown. So we do a lot of interesting things in the groups that I run. Um, you know, I, I love bringing people together, I, you know, trying to think about some of the other things that I love, but like I, you always sort of keep circling back. And so this idea of coming back to sacred sites and, and, and ancient wisdom and so forth, it really, really came back to me in a big, big way. Um, 2012 was this huge, huge um, moment where so one of the, the groups that I run is called Maverick 1000 that you mentioned. It's a group of, of different industry leading entrepreneurs. And originally it started just as adventure travel. Like I just wanted to kind of scratch my own itch. I was like, okay, let's go do these amazing adventures with people that I love and, and cool friends and entrepreneurs. And then we'd have business sessions and we'd have sort of charity aspects or impact aspects um, as part of it. And, uh, and, but it was the first thing that I'd ever done that didn't quite work. And, and it was really interesting as an entrepreneur, you know, as a serial entrepreneur, or parallel entrepreneur, whatever, like having multiple things going at once, um, where it was like, okay, that, that wasn't, and my full passion, like, so that, that came from a question that I asked 12 years ago, which was, am I happy? Would I be happy doing what I'm doing 10 years from now? And outside looking in, everything was great. I was making a lot of money, helping a lot of people, but it wasn't my truest expression of who I was. I'm like, oh, well, I'd be happiest at this intersection of, originally it was a dollar sign, a happy face and a heart. And so we took people dune buggy racing. We took people, I don't know, flying MIG jets in Russia. We did all these different things. And then about $400,000 in my wife's like, um, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. And, and my passion for my other side of the business was waning. Um, that was in the internet marketing publishing space and just wasn't there anymore. And, and so it really forced me to look at my why and the why wasn't to build an adventure travel company. It was to truly change the way business is played. And, and from there, uh, you know, 2012. So I asked another question. So I do a lot of journaling and I asked the question, I said, what would my 111 year old self tell me? And using my non-dominant wow. hand, which is a great process. Um, it said light a thousand suns who can light another thousand suns who have the potential to light another thousand suns. And, and so that's when we changed the name to Maverick 1000 and really changed it to this more of a global network that focused on growth, impact, and, and joy. And the big changing point was that 2012, where normally our, our summits, our annual summits were like the first week in December at this point. And I had gotten back into a lot of this Mayan cosmology, gotten back into just all sorts of things from a new lens now, uh, like a spiritual context, because everything I had done up to this point, I could have gone back almost like the golden handcuffs. I could have gone back and done everything that I've done before and I would have been fine, but it just felt like, I call it the cosmic alarm clock. Like mm. it, it's just like you can hit snooze on it or you can answer it. And it's like this little whisper that you have that there's something more, there's something bigger. And it also most times is going to be beyond what you've normally done previously to this. Um, it's going to be sometimes a leap of faith. Sometimes it's going to be, I, I say following your heart is, typically scary, but, but never wrong. And, and that's what, that's Beautiful. what this continued to be because it was like, I could have just kept, kept, could have like, just been like, ah, whatever this adventure travel thing, you know, I tried that, that didn't work, but I'm like, no, there's something bigger here. And I kept exploring it. And even that, so the 2012 was coming around and I literally told my team, I'm like, we're going to do summit in the Mayan, uh, Riviera Maya. And they're like, what? Uh, on winter solstice. And they're like, no, that's like four days before Christmas. I'm like, no, we have to be there. And, and we, we changed everything. We're able to, to find a great connection there who actually let us uh, spend the night in a Mayan village. And so that's how we welcomed in solstice wow. and with traditional Mayan ceremonies, including a Temescal. And, and we literally, you know, this is kind of a, a long story, but we literally came out at midnight on the solstice, like this, you know, the synchronicity of it was not lost on me. And that was, you know, this like this time of like, okay, well, this it, it kind of like bonks you on the head and, and, and it's like okay this pay attention here this and, is and the real. symbolism yeah and the symbolism of temescology you're going into the womb of the earth to be reborn and it, it was just incredibly powerful and so we we dug in much more into this evolutionary context for entrepreneurs 
like how do you evolve yourself and evolve your business? This is a great story. I, there's a few things that I kind of made a, a pin and I want to circle back to. I, I first want to really dig into this idea of evolutionary entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, right? Where you're following this cosmic alarm clock to do, what did you say? Like what your heart knows is right. It might be scary, but it's, it's never going to be wrong. Yeah. Um, this is how I've lived my life in the last like seven to 10 years. And um, it's, it's definitely looked scary for a lot of people that are close to me. They're like, what are you doing, man? And it, it just, it just, this, this knowing this inner clarity that everything else might make me richer or look even better on the outside, but it's, it's basically an illusion. It's basically empty in comparison to what your, your personal awakening, your personal source keeps telling you. Um, it's it, massive. It, it's happening in the world. Yeah. And it's, and it's trusting you know, that, that intuition and it's, and it's more than intuition. It's, uh, it's like you said, the inner knowing, and it's just like the inner conviction of, um, you know, I, I, I talk to entrepreneurs a lot about how do you connect your, your head, your heart, your higher purpose. So the head is like the business side of things, the marketing side that, you know, the thing, the, the, the P and L, but then your heart, like, what do you really want to do? What's the impact you want to make in the world? And then your higher purpose, like we talked about why you planted it here and you connect all, all three of them. It's like in yoga, that, that alignment, and when you get alignment, then things just, just start flowing. And, um, and so, you know, the other analogy that I use a lot is, is you have joy right here. Joy is kind of your, your, your attractor, almost like attraction beam that that's, that's pulling like you that. forward. And, and joy is different than happiness, right? Like happiness, I kind of think about almost in a way of like an ice cream cone. You can eat an ice cream cone and be really, really happy when you eat that first ice cream cone or maybe even half of it. But then you get into your second one, and you're like, oh man, my stomach hurts. And, and uh, you know, why did I do that? But, but you thought that's what made you happy. But joy is like feeling fully utilized and like, like at the end of the day, you're spent, but in a great way. Like, and it feels like play. And so joy is constantly like moving you towards that. So you're being attracted that way. And then pain are the guardrails. And so pain can be really why we have these big swings. Like, you know, I was talking about that $400,000 sort of bonk on my head. Uh, <laughs> plus I ended up selling my Aston Martin, you know, plus, uh, you know, I, I could go on and on. Like I have, you know, I, one of my friends and I had lunch a couple of years back when I was telling that story. And he's like, oh, yours was 400,000, mine was 4 million. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. And so, but you could have these, you know, that's, that's pain are these guardrails that is like, okay, well now, you, and, and then the more in alignment you are, the more you're going to, be like this moving up that that third way up towards joy beautiful i love this analogy and it, there's also something interesting about the materialistic kind of swim back right so if you for a while went into the very materialistic kind of world and it succeeded and succeeded and succeeded the wake up somehow has to come through that dimension as well because it's it's just where a lot of the energy is spent right so that swing back i think you know it sounds like it was very much worth it in in your personal experience yeah no 100 percent. it's uh it's so fascinating because um you know again i work with entrepreneurs mostly so for entrepreneurs we're typically in this future world of like okay when i get the next whatever if my, my company's worth 10 million or 100 million like i just spoke to two entrepreneurs the other day that are like yeah my goals are a 100 million dollar company i'm like why and like it just like I, and then when i got to like the second why is like well, it just sounds cool it, it, and like there was no <laughs> real and, and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with it per se but it becomes a little bit of a hollow goal so I like to, like in Evolved Enterprise, I talk about this idea of an impact scoreboard. And so yes. there, there's 11 impact models um, I talk about in the book. And, you know, a lot of people, when they talk about business as this force for good or, or, or creating uh, impact and change in the world, like they might think about like Tom's Shoes was a, a really good example originally. And Tom's Shoes is buy one, give one model. And, and so, you know, I know Blake and, and uh, got a chance to interview him recently and, and we were interviewing him and, and, you know, he would only talk about you know, we have 35 million pairs of shoes that we gave away. Like that's, that is a tremendous amount of shoes and it's great. And I, you know, give Blake a huge credit for that. And, and really he became the poster child for this sort of social enterprise. And so for a little forth. while he was the yeah. poster child for sure. Yeah. And, but you know, what, what's interesting is uh, so, you know, his company, you know, they can focus on that as an impact scoreboard, but now as we've gotten more sophisticated and maybe a higher level of consciousness around this, it, like, Oh, well, and, and he understood it too, as he went along, was, oh, you know, maybe we're taking away marketplace from, from places that were giving away these shoes and, and these different things. And so these, these other byproducts that show up, 
But so I have, you know, 10 other models that people don't get stuck in just like the buy one, give one. Sometimes that is the right model, but, but many times it might not be. But if you have an impact scoreboard and you look at, okay, like there's a company that's done really, really well. And I don't know all their inner mechanics, but it's called Four Ocean. There's these little bracelets, you know, that are made out of uh, recycled ocean plastic or, or, or trash out of waterways. And, and they have a really interesting model where it's like, okay, one pound of, of trash is taken out and it's turned into these bracelets. And so now they have on their website, you know, how many millions of pounds of trash they've taken out, which is, you know, just another great metric. So it's an impact scoreboard and they can point to that. And then people get excited. So in Evolved Enterprise, I talk about this idea that, you know, customers want to buy from companies that have a greater mission and purpose. They actually want to share it. It changes their identity. It moves the company from being transactional to transformative to even transcending what, what a business can be. Uh, but it, it also has to be done with authenticity and this genuineness that, that it's a true impact and not just done for maybe the marketing side or, or maybe like a greenwashing or a pink washing as you've seen. And, and so there's a lot of factors to, to look at. But so this impact scoreboard allows you then to say, okay, if we built a hundred million dollar company, like what is the impact we could have? And that becomes the new metric. Um, and, and as a byproduct, then that's baked in. I love what you just went with that, Yannick. There's, you know, there, there is something about this like greenwashing, um, whitewashing, pinkwashing, however you want to call it, um, storyline that that brings me back to what you said a little while ago around like you kind of got bored or tired or you, you use different words around this like marketing background of yours, right? Yeah. Because really, if you think of, I'm going to go one more back. You talked about like parapsychology. Um, as a child, you were fascinated with with these like, um, you know, elements of reality. If you think of it, I feel like we've used marketing in this way where we've taken all of our magic to create illusions and create like lie to people to sell things just for the sense of profit. And at this point in 2021, it just has become so obvious that this is entirely empty and it will never create happiness or alignment with the planet or any well-being for anyone. So, so we've gradually become more aware and more bored of it. And to the point where now we're in this pivot and turnaround phase, if it's five years or, or 10 years, where I think we'll see the whole world adjust to this over time because it just, there is no other pathway anymore. Yeah. Well, so it's fascinating. And, and some, you know, some of the people that I really looked up to in the, in that marketing world that I learned from way back, like David Ogilvy, he was kind of a, one of the top ad men and turn of the century. And he was actually a direct response marketer. So he understood what the, what, what the person really wanted um, directly. And, and one of the things he used to say, but, but not everyone really got was that the consumer is not a moron. They're your, they're your wife or they're your, your grandmother. And, and today this is even more so like the, like the way that, you know, the, 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 the buyer is incredibly sophisticated um, for the most part. And, and they, they can see through the marketing gimmicks and, and things like that. So that's why, you know, a couple of years back. Um, so Kentucky fried chicken ran a campaign where they had pink buckets of chicken. And it was like 50 cents was donated to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Um, and, and so you talk, that's this pink washing thing. It's like, oh, great. You know, we're going to get involved with breast cancer. Seems like a great idea. You know, they had smart people, I'm sure, sign off on this, that this is awesome. We're going to do something that for social good. And, and then I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't get it. And my friend's like, well, well they, they sell breast to chicken and this is for breast cancer. I'm like, oh, OK. And, but, but, you know, a diet wow. uh, high in saturated fat has been linked to cancer. So it's like, it's, it's very, you know, just incongruent. Mm. Um, and, Out of integrity, and so, really. Yeah, and that's why they have a massive backlash on social media. So there's more and more transparency than ever before. And, and so I, I look at, you know, things are going to sort of got, get figured out um, sooner than later if it's not in integrity in, in that way. And, and even like, I think, I think companies that mean well, but they, they're not realizing like what, so... Um, and I don't know all the inside behind this, but there was a, there was a cruise line. This is at the biggest level, right? A cruise line, you might've seen this, that um, I think it was Carnival uh, wanted to do a socially conscious cruise where people would volunteer. And, and so they, they had an entire cruise ship just, just for that reason. And I forgot the name of it now. But, but it got like just massive flack about, you know, the amount of pollution yeah. and, and, and going on. And it's just like, I remember this actually. Yeah. And it's just like, well, 
it, it doesn't it doesn't really really work and and it's fascinating because we do a lot of work with virgin and virgin has their new Vo virgin voyages coming out next and so they have looked at you know there's so, so there's those, like two ways that they've kind of looked at it one is let's go from the bottom like start at the very beginning and be like how would we create you know the, the least polluting kind of cruise ship and what would that look like and so they've done a you know no no single use plastics and different things like they've really looked at it from that angle so they've done a pretty good job and then but at the same time it's like the footprint that they're going to be leaving is is pretty big but you know the they, they've come out and said okay well there's going to be cruises so it's better to have a better cruise than a than, than no cruise or, or than to have cruises that are doing terrible uh, for, for the world and for the environment. So, you know, I can kind of buy into that a, a little bit, uh, but, but it's, it's just fascinating to see how, uh, how much more discerning people are. And, and it's going to only continue that way. And, and this is the seismic shift happening that businesses really need to think about what is their greater purpose and greater mission mm -hmm. because consumer buying behavior is changing that they're they're deciding to buy based on the mission and based on the story and then it's happening that's the outside in and it's happening from the inside out which is team members want to work for companies that have a greater mission and purpose 100 and i think if you're at this you know cutting edge of, of consciousness of spirituality in your own being that's that's really the mission is like stop the outside in um you know impulses and if it is about from from quarantines to vaccines or about buying products or whatever it may might be and check in first what's actually coming as a signal from the inside out what's the 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 source energy connection that that i have as an individual that then informs me what is my uniqueness, my diversity that I want to apply into the world, right? And there's something really interesting, again, when we go back to the child, because the child that's innocent that just has this like dream, this template of what it's planted it for, right? Yeah. Doesn't think about the way business has worked on this planet. The child doesn't think about the way nation states have thought on this planet. It doesn't think about these, these roadblocks that our parents or our older generations, or maybe even the the respect and the hierarchy kind of demand a child just sees possibility and in this field of possibility really is where a lot happens and it seems to me that as we're readjusting to you know um the, the reality of global pollution i think this is my my favorite way to put it to not get lost in any of the rabbit holes of other buzzwords and and, and things people like to get lost in this there's pollution that's here there's 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 an inequality that's here and it doesn't take a genius to, to see that. And once we observe that, what can, and I like the word fixing, but what can bring us and align us into a way forward is not perfect action. You just went, went there and it's really, it's really true. Like we're not looking for perfect action. We're, we're looking for action that is in alignment with this possibility field that the child, the innocent, pure being sees. Yeah. Yeah. I have two things on that. One is um, it's like, how do we use the mechanisms in place so that when the green network where, where you and I met um, the intention of that, and this is something I've held for almost like 10 years now and been doodling on it and thinking about it is um, like, how do we nudge consciousness by just one degree using the leverage of business? So, so the leverage that business has to me are the distribution channels, are the talent within organizations, the, um, the, the supply chain, like where are you buying from the, your, your, your team members? So I have something called empowered employment, maybe we'll talk about. And then uh, the actual product or service itself, like how do you bake that in? And so notice all those five things, I, can, I didn't even mention capital, like that's you know that another mm -hmm. piece. So it doesn't even have to cost any money. It doesn't have to be looked at as, as a cost. But so, you know, my thought is when you can nudge the consciousness of, the leaders in business and the leaders who are who have other leaders listening to them or following them in some way, then you have this greater ripple of impact that happens. And uh, you know, I have another way of thinking about it, which you and I laugh about, which I, I call the evil schemes for global good. And, <laughs> yeah. And and I still you know, chuckle about it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, an evil is an acronym, which is uh, evolutionary, uh, visionary. Uh, impactful legacy. You but, figured but, it out. The way to make evil sound good. Yeah, that's right. But, <laughs> but, but I, when I, and I think of evil as like in quotation marks too. But it's like how to use. Um, and, and this is like fun for me. Is like thinking about okay, how do we use all our persuasive marketing influence and all those other things, but use it for something that we know is going to have 
global good. And I like the alliteration of global. So I have to figure out, you know, planetary purpose or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I used to call my coaching programs for a long time, planetary yeah. purpose, because it's, it's what it, what is coming from the inside out is, is this idea that like you are your purpose. The more you unfold you into the world in a planetary awareness, understanding consciousness, right. the more of, of use and service you're going to be. I yeah. want to, I want to mention the evil part though, Yannick, because I think it's genius actually now that I've heard it and I'm aware that we're recording it, something changed in this moment for me. That is, you're integrating the shadow by calling it that. And what I mean with that is that there is a lot of bypassing that we all are or have been a part of. And, you know, uh, if you don't want to be called into the all there, then, then that's okay too. But, you know, this idea that everything should only be positive and good going forward. True, the direction is a positive one, Hopefully yeah. we're, we're evolving, but let's be real about the, the, the oneness that we have as individuals and as a collective with all the evil things that have ever happened through the human species, because we're connected yeah. to it. It's alive uh, in us in small versions, right? And so- Oh man, I'm getting using a, that like, for good. Like goosebumps as you're talking about it, because it is so true. And it's something that most people don't want to look at at all. Um, exactly. So I'm, I'm, I'm outside of DC and they have the Holocaust Museum here and-, and uh, family's Russian Jews. That's how we, we left Russia in 76. And, uh, you know, I went to the Holocaust Museum as a kid and, you know, you get something out of it, but, but I went back recently and literally I'm walking through the exhibits and I'm using, I don't know if you're familiar with the Hona Onapona technique, yeah. or however you quite say it, but I'm like doing that process as I'm walking through oh, and staring into some of the eyes of the German SS officers that are pictured there. And, and, you know, it's, it's easy to be like, yeah, I, I wouldn't have done that. But, and, and, and then even like, you know, bringing this level of forgiveness and love and like, it, it's such a powerful, powerful medicine and, uh, and it's difficult too. And, and then embracing that shadow of, yeah, the, I mean, the evil schemes are definitely tongue in cheek. Um, and so I have this, this character that I've been working on that this might be the first time that we bring him out into, into uh, oh, nice. the world. So he's, uh, his name is Maxime the Marketer. And Maxime Max, the Marketer. <laughs> Maxime is a little bit like my, my dad. Uh, he's a, <laughs> he has a Russian accent, but he's also old school marketing. And, uh, and he can say whatever he wants. And he brings uh, like a level of levity to, uh, to it. And so, you know, Ma Maxime would be like, so, so th there's a story <laughs> about my dad. So when I first started uh, teaching people how to, how to take their information and content and sell it and kind of went off on my own. I worked for my dad's business for a long time. That's where I learned marketing and, and copywriting and so forth. But, and then I left that company and it was a really hard decision to leave a family business that I thought I was going to take over. And so uh, maybe a year after that, we're driving around in the car. And, and so he's listening to an audio program that I had put out teaching people how I, how I started with this little idea online and that became my first million dollar idea. And then I'm, he's listening to it and we're literally driving in the car and, uh, and, and he's listening, listening, he ejects it. And he's like, people pay for this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, so he's, uh, he's part of, uh, you know, part of Maxime and, uh, and, but it, but it also just brings this opportunity of like, all right, you, know, you could have a lot of fun. Puppets can basically say anything. There's a, one of my friends yep. created something called Avenue Q uh, which was, uh, it's got Jeff Marks and, and his partner and it ran on Broadway or off Broadway for a long time. And like puppets can just do anything. So now you could have characters that talk about what, you know, what, what's, what's going on or, or, or in the marketing way and without you having to do it in a, in a slimy way as well. There's something I loved about your intro, you know, that like, let's not take ourselves to serious and let's have fun while we make impact. And I think this is genius for anybody who's only listening to the audio. Uh, Yannick also showed us Maxime the Marketer. He, he looks kind of like, <laughs> like a, a mix of a dragon and Elmo. He's, and, uh, yes. Yeah, Julian. Okay. Tell me about uh, what you have for an idea to help the world. An idea to help the world. Oh, that's yeah, uh, Ma Maxime. You're putting me on the spot. Yeah. So tell me one good idea to save this uh, planet you call this this planet <laughs> i don't know if uh, i have ideas to save it i think uh, i have ideas to get more humans connected with their their internal compass and connect with more other humans that are on the same you know change making nexus of this 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 inner 
bringing out this inner devotion into our outer world. Um, and, and with that, you know, what I'm dreaming of, and this is interesting because it, it relates to Yannick's Maverick 1000, is if we had pods of 144 people where each of the participants activates another 144 people in the blink of an eye, we're all switched on and connected around this idea of purpose of, of, of like, you are actually here because you're planted it. Mm. You're not, you're not here to go shopping, you know? Yes. Well, so now I take this idea. I would take 144 and we let everybody buy in for $144. And now <laughs> we make everybody rich and we can make it a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That, that's, that's the old school marketing world. How do we make the squeeze out every single person so much that we, uh, we end up with the most dollars? For no, I, I do love, I love the idea of, you know, leverage. So, you know, that, that's what came to me, that idea of lighting a thousand suns who can each have the potential of lighting another thousand suns, right? Yeah. So in this example that you're talking about, you know, the 144, that becomes a, a vehicle for the next you said a 144 and so forth. And that, and that's how we're going to, that, that's how we're going to bring change. Um, and, and it's not going to be, you know, I, I've, I've thought about this a lot. You know, people talk about, oh, I want to change the world. I want to change the world, but it starts with one individual. And it starts with yourself first we and, and doing that, that inner yes. work. And, and even like the shadow work, like you were talking about is a big part of it. Um, you know, and then also the resilience to know when to say no thanks, because if I say yes, I'm actually complicit with a world that isn't the world that works for everyone. Right. Yeah. So there's a certain line where uh, very real in 2021, um, without getting into too much detail, where a, each individual has to ask themselves, do I want to consent mm. for the continuation of the current global governance systems? Or yeah. do I want to actually say no, thank you. Oh. Health looks a different way. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is, so this is bringing up something really, really big. So one of my, uh, one of my teachers, she's a Diné grandmother. So more accurately known, you know, most people know Navajo, but Diné is the accurate term. And, and so I sat in sweat lodge with her several times and just really fortunate for that. And, and the last time we, we spoke and she, we held a, a group of uh, brought Mavericks there. She was talking about this idea of consent and how silence is consent and how, um, how, you know, what, by, by so, we, and, you know, I, we can go a bit metaphysical on this, but I, I believe that we live in this free will universe. And, and so that we're in this space where, where, you know, you either decide what, what you want or, or others will decide for you um, unless you make a decision. And so yep. having consensus, hers is, um, and I don't remember the exact words, but it's something like, and, and Pat, her, you know, Pat McCabe, she's part of the One Degree Network that, that you were part of. And, uh, and so she was talking about, uh, you know, that I only consent to the, the natural laws of, of the earth um, and heart of the earth or something like that. And I, I can't remember exactly, but, but so that really, really hit me about, you know, what, what do I give my full consent to and, and actively doing that and, and with, with real discernment and, and intention. So, you know, I think intention is huge. I think bringing um, real awareness, like, like all of that is around consciousness too. Like in our decisions that we're making, that consciousness decides like how, how further along we can see our decisions. So whether we're doing it in our business or for our lives, uh, so, so many ancient cultures will talk about seven generations and that's their level of discernment and level of consciousness that they're thinking through. And this idea of um, consent is, is huge. It's like how to be in alignment with natural laws and not man-made global laws this is huge yannick i'm so glad we're having this dialogue uh you know so so for one i'm going to ask a seven generational question at the end this is kind of the okay. reason the, the deeper calling that made me start this podcast actually is this question um i want to come back to consent and natural law for a second and then and then silence because it's it's very present in in this space for me right now so so yes the child that comes into this world that's planeted here with this idea of like, why am I planeted? What am I going to bring? Doesn't know about man's law and man's 
creation or a human a human's creation of systems and then we just take them all for granted where it's normal that we have a passport it's normal that we belong to a nation it's normal that we count in dollars and it's normal that time and space are linear and, and all these things that you know once we venture into quantum physics and we, we you know we just open the the, the the universal mind box a little bit none of that is actually real and yeah. so we've agreed that it's real and at this point in our time we have to opt out at some point if we want to create a world that is different and it looks different for everyone. And it looks, it's a different timing maybe for everyone as well. Um, but I think this consent to natural law, like Pat is guiding both of us right now is a very powerful one because imagine rivers have legal defense. Imagine the, the headwaters of the planet had legal defense. There was no, no pollution into them. There would, there would be no, there would be no, no way to, to just get away paying a bribe and oh yeah we just polluted the the headwaters of a continent no big deal that wouldn't exist anymore and that comes with consciousness too right because if you're not going to do that if you see what the uh, byproducts would be if you're caring for the seven generational connection yeah, yeah exactly. which is another part of our shadow work right so i want to bring up the silence earlier you mentioned the, the 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 german genocide on on the jewish people and yeah. and you know i'm i'm german by passport i'm actually sitting in germany as we're having this conversation and oh that's yeah that's like, right acknowledge yeah, i didn't it. even like put that together when we when we were talking it's in our space yannick it's yeah. in, in the space between you and i because think of it like black lives matter um was a, a big cultural wave in the last year in 2020 huge very needed lots of you know uh, marginalized people from all kinds of backgrounds and ethnic ethnic backgrounds that reconciliation has to be an active process but between you and i since our ethnic background is 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 you know russian jewish and and german that's what's in the space hmm. so I, I, I just want to acknowledge it one more time and yeah, and, you yeah know, wrap my yeah. eyes and, and and i also have to admit like i don't necessarily know what to do other than to acknowledge it uh, yeah well even just just bringing that forward has a new level of awareness awareness on it and it's yeah, that's, that's really, really powerful. Uh, and, and I, you know, what, what brings up with me and we're having this conversation also, you know, talking about Pat and, and uh, you know, just different in, indigenous um, like people, like, like the history, when you start looking at history, it, it's a very different story than we're, we're told in our schools and growing up. And, and I don't even know, you know, and I start uncovering it a little bit by these, these teachers that are helping and and uncover you know almost like removing some of the covers that you have on on your eyes and it's blindfold and um and i'm like oh my gosh yeah i i don't you know i didn't realize that now it, it, this idea of reconciliation and and what what needs to be done and, and you know even the united states like like one of my friends who's um a very wise individual he said that there's not going to be peace in in the us and in, in america even the world until there is a uh, acknowledgement of what has happened with indigenous people around the world everywhere big time and the same with slaves from africa yeah that's that's alive it's, all over the american continent very right. very real and so the and, and you know that is um yeah that's that's very real and and, and so you know it's it, so i was saying that i you know i wrote this interesting new essay about new rules new language new story and and so part of it is about if we're fighting against something then there's an opposite energy of fighting back against it and then fighting back and fighting back. And so that's where the, these new rules come from, uh, which, which are about, I saw this interesting video that, um, that this one woman who's a really interesting venture capitalist posted, uh, she, she invests in underrepresented founders. Her name is Harlan Hamilton. And she posted this great video about people playing Monopoly and how if um, one person just arbitrarily got more money they would start acting more aggressive and and like banging their piece when they moved around the board and just being you know a complete jackass and it was fascinating and she, and and that you know the point of the video was you know this is about inequality and how this happens and so it, I, and i said yes and then i also said well the rules of monopoly are to bankrupt the other person yeah, yeah. and so that's the rules are set up in this way so if there are different rules like uh, I have uh, friends that created something called Fresh Biz Games out of Israel, and they have a bunch of facilitators that run these these workshops. And it's a game a little bit like Monopoly, but it's been great because it's in collaboration and working together and partnering. 
uh, you actually move through the board even faster and get to the ultimate destination, which is this island. It's actually based on Necker Island. And, and you get to this island and everyone can get there. It's not one winner. And so there's you know, new rules. And when we have new rules, then the game changes. And so I believe that we, we build a better game, then people will come over and opt into this better game, whether it's mm -hmm. in the financial system, education, healthcare, you know, you name it, every single place is really ripe for disruption. And then they come over here and, and then the old game, you know, loses its energy. May it be so. I'm going to throw one, one more little story in before I ask you this question about your, your seven generational vision. Okay. And so I was just in Brazil um, for the last two months. And Brazil is a country that loves memes. Memes are just like the currency. And so the meme was um, a group of monkeys and one monkey had all the bananas. And it's like spoken by a psychologist, the, 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 the speech bubble. And it's like, If we were to watch monkeys and one monkey would take all the bananas and own all the bananas, we would say, this monkey is crazy. What is going on in this tribe? This is just wrong. But if one human takes all of the currency, we put them on the cover of Forbes. <laughs> <laughs> it made me chuckle so much because it was so simple. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd never see a monkey take all the bananas and not share them with his, his, his other people. Yeah. So... You know, this has been something that, you know, I've had conversations with my, with my friends about in a deep way because we're looking at new business and equity structures for some of the companies that we're designing. And, and I really believe really very, very deeply in this idea of the more value you create, the more reward. Like, so, you know, someone can, two people can work just as hard, 12 hours a day, 10 hours a day, whatever. And one person is... Um, I don't know, let's say painting fences for 10 hours a day. And the other person is, let's just keep the painting analogy, painting, I don't know, masterpieces or murals or something like that. You know, what is the value um, of, of, you know, they've all put in the same amount of work. You know, some people would argue, well, you know, they both deserve the same amount of, mm -hmm. of reward because, you know, they, they, they should be compensated equally. And so I, I do think that there's a difference in you know what the higher level of value and but everyone can be figuring out what is their highest level of value they can be putting out like if painting the fence might not be that high that person's highest level of value they just never imagined that they could paint a masterpiece or imagine that they could do something else that had a higher level of expression for themselves um, and that's where i want to get to and then you know and, and you look at also like what is the reward if the reward is is money And we've made this consensual reality that money is our, is, is, you know, the dollars. Um, I have this other concept that, that I play with in my cosmic journal. I call it infinite dollars. And, and it's this idea that what if when you were, when you were born, there's a bank account that was drawn on this, uh, this, this universal bank that only paid you um, when you, when you delivered something that is your fullest expression of who you are. And, and so encouraging creative expression. Yeah. At, at the highest level. Like, so I call it play, play fully. And like, it's this idea, like it, it feels like play, but it's full expression. And so you're only going to get rewarded infinite dollars, which are big, better than dollars, euros, uh, yen, even Bitcoin. It's infinite <laughs> dollars. And it's, you know, this is a natural currency. Uh, and, and so that's, so it's like modulating those two. And I haven't quite, you know, got to my own, what, what is this alignment fully, but, but there's something in there. And especially now I'm even talking it through it a little bit more with you too. There, there's something a little bit closer about higher level value expression and then play fully uh, and then being rewarded in infinite dollars. There is something really big there. I can feel it too. There, there's something about encouraging and empowering individuals to express their unique gifts that this current paradigm dollar system, et cetera, doesn't do. And so um, that's what we want in a world that works for everyone, you know, diversity and equity in that sense of, you know, e equality in, in, a, in, a, in an equity way isn't because everyone has the same or gets the same or is worth um, Well, it's worth the same in an ethical sense, but, yes. but we're all different and that's the beauty, right. right? And that needs to be encouraged. Right. And it can't be, you know, I, I read Ayn Rand, you know, many times as a, as a younger person and, and this whole notion of, of like people 
putting in their best work, but then others simply just taking it, uh, you know, which you would call the, these looters that are taking it because of, because of violence or because of governmental uh, laws and so forth. And, and that doesn't work either. Like, it's, it's like, you're not gonna put out your best stuff if you know that it's just gonna get taken and, and you're not gonna get rewarded in some way. Uh, but I also don't believe in, you know, th th we're, we're seeing this massive inequality of, of, of wealth of what we call wealth right now. And, and that's, that's not, that doesn't bode well for the future either. So let's go to the future here for, for a closing question. So the, the question is basically, if we were to zoom out on the timeline where we're, you know, going to this seven generational place, seven generations into the future, what kind of ancestor are we to that future? And, and so specifically, Yannick, like what's your, your heart's dream message or, or vision of that future? Well, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I have this expression that I've used that is uh, our, our ancestors and our great, great grandchildren are rooting for us. And, and it's, it's this notion of that we're in this massive inflection point right now. I believe that the, the 2020s, this decade is this, the most transformative decade that we've seen in quite a long time because of this intersection of technology, consciousness, where we are in actual galactic space and, and where this ascending level of consciousness is happening. And, and if, so if I was gonna you know, paint a picture of, of seven generations out, it would be, uh, I, I think the, you know, the, the easiest expression that I have that I continue coming back with is, is, is play fully it, it, and fully is in parentheses and, and play, you know, what feels like play and full expression, but then the byproducts are, are of that is, is purposefully and profitfully, uh, even gratefully. And I have a doodle about that too, so I can show, <laughs> show us. Show us for everyone who's watching the video. I love this. I'm, I'm just letting it sink in. Play fully. Yeah. I'll show you the. This is it. <laughs> rule number two, see rule number one. Yes, it says, yeah, it, says, it has a picture of uh, rules taped to the earth and it says rule number one, play fully, fully in parentheses and then rule number two, see rule number one. And then there's, there's byproducts or purpose. I love it. I love how much your creativity speaks through you and you have these like disciplines that support this creativity, like, you know, doodling 108 days and, and creating a book out of it that you didn't even intend in the first place. And just, this is the kind of way how, how play begins, right? How play becomes yeah. nor normalized. Actually, the other way that I was going to answer this question, and this might be fun. And I don't think you have a cosmic journal yet because we haven't got you one wherever no I, I don't have one yet i uh, yeah. i'll have to get one once i'm back in yeah well give me your address i don't know i can i can get it to germany but so the way it works canada is, like is horrible, probably better yeah so uh we can we can flip to a page and and see what the the answer is for the seven generations um or you can give me a number what do you prefer uh let's do so between three and 189 like i just got 68 randomly into my head okay hold on all right, so let's go. Let's go there. I can sixty-eight. All right, so we. That's actually kind of funny. So sixty-eight is this is so on the left-hand side are our blank pages, or we have different prompts and so forth. So we either we'll go we'll go forward one page, but I actually kind of like this as an analogy. It's, it's you get to write. This is, you know, it's a blank slate. It's a blank slate. We get to and, write it. And you get to write the, this you, is genius. You get to write the story. <laughs> so, but you have a couple little prompts here and a little, a little space for it, but it's uh, yeah. And, and I, and I do feel that way. Like you get to write the story and at and, some and point, the, at the top yeah. there, sorry, Yannick, but at the top there, you got to plug in first. So you got to plug into your own source <laughs> and then you can write the story. There you go. And, and then we got our, our lightning bolts and a little bit of magic happening. Uh, 
Yeah, this is funny. Whenever I have people say a number and we get to one of these pages, I normally flip to the next page, but but this is a really perfect analogy for it. And, and I feel like that, you know, and, and this is the, what, what happens is that you get to write your own story and you get to also be the, your own publicist and your own uh, biggest critic and, and your own, uh, you know, publisher of it. And, and so if you take that, that book analogy or story analogy, but then at some point, um, it felt like you're being written and, and then tapping into that, like you, you get a connection with, with a deeper something, whatever, whatever you want to call it, whatever you connect with, but, and then it feels like you're being like, it, it's coming through you. And, 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 you know, for me, that's through maybe mindfulness practices or, or whatever it is. And, but, but that's where you get that stillness and that inner knowing that we were talking about originally of, of falling your heart, but, your own heart and yeah. but it's and more than your fun. heart. Yeah, this was fun. Thank you so much for for all the inspirations for going to, you know, some of the shadow work for some of the really inspired positive direction. Yeah, this this is beautiful. Thanks, Julian. Thank you for having me.